Jersey, uh, talking with Ken Salas. Uh, do I say your name right, by the way? Every time you say it wrong. Oh, okay. How do I say it right? Salas. Today I'm talking with Ken Salas, and uh, he wrote the book Landscapes in Oil uh, through Monticelli Press. He's actually the one who kind of introduced me into uh, Monticelli and Victoria over there, and uh, which really gave me the opportunity to write my book. So without further ado, Ken Salas. Salas, good job. There he is. So, uh, so talk to me, how did you, how did you, what prompted you to do a book? Uh, well, it was funny because I, I was writing in my notes over and over all the, like trying to put into uh, a book form for my own self mm -hmm. and for workshops I do. Like what is drawing, what are the elements of drawing, value, color, and, and the elements of the landscape. So I've got this whole thing sketched out and it's kind of one of those things where like the universe hears you. And I had it like a book laid out, and then I get an email and a call from Victoria Monticelli out of the blue saying, hey, we love your paintings, will you do a book? And I was like, yeah, let me tell you my idea. And I spent 10 minutes on the film. She's like, sounds like you already have it written. That's awesome. I was like, yeah. And uh, she says, okay, let's do it. And it, she was referred to me by uh, Rob Zeller. So yeah. she, she had heard uh, Rob had done his book before Rob yours. Rob his book, yeah. Uh, she was kind of like doing a lot of art books. She runs Monticelli. She's like the editor there. Yeah. And she had done what, I think Mario's book, right? Mar yep. How to, uh, yeah. Watercolor great. painting. Watercolor painting, great book. And then there was another one, the um, anatomy guy who did the book. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can't remember the name right now. Yeah, so it's kind of like, it seemed like Monticelli Press, or Monticelli Studio, which is under Monticelli Press, had this library that were growing of art books. And mm -hmm. uh, it seems like at the time they were like, hey, we need a landscape guy. And then they, they were looking around, or person. And then they found you, and then... Uh, so tell me about the experience when you did it. Uh, it was like putting your life on hold for six months. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, what I would do is I'd work, I, you know, I'm a magician and mentalist also, mm -hmm. right? So I'd be doing all these shows and working, and then at night at 9.30 when our, our son would go to bed, I'd set up on the kitchen table and I'd write until like three in the morning. Uh, and then go to bed and wake up, do the next thing. And that was for six months worth, five months. Uh, so it was exciting though. The best thing, I didn't know this was going to happen, Todd. You, I'm not sure if you did on your book, but in writing the book, you like clarify everything in your brain. So when you go back to paint, yeah. you just clarified so much in your mind. Yeah, for sure. It was a big bonus, you know. Yeah, for me, um, you know, it, it's great because you kind of introduced me to Victoria and then I got the opportunity to write mine. And uh, one of the biggest questions I get all the time is, um, you know, what why did you write the book? And for me, it's, I wrote the book I wish I had. Because, you know, I'm sure you did too, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So it's almost like we took all our notes of, uh, of teachers and said, you know, how can I, how can I make the book that uh, my students could just pick up or something? And then, uh, and then it would help them. Yeah. It help our, help our teaching. Yeah. Yeah, I wish, actually, I, I, that's exactly what I wrote in the forward. I was like, this is the book I wish I would have found when I was 15. Oh, maybe I stole it from you then. You did. You stole it from me. No, okay. didn't. We it's probably just had the same thought, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but looking at your book, I thought, I was, damn, if I, would have had, if I would have had this book yeah. at 15, it would have changed everything for me, too, because the way you lay everything out, it's so freaking clear. And with still life, you know, you have the controlled light. So yeah. you could really explain what's happening. You're not worried about atmospheric conditions, mm -hmm. you know, and how you go through color is so clean that I was like, I wish I would have run into this, you know, when I was 15. Well, I do think we're at a good time where, um, obviously, you know, one of the quotes I put in my book is that um, the, the Newton quote, I stand on the uh, shoulders of all the giants that have come before me and therefore I can see further. So for me, you know, when I did the book, I thought, let's pull in all the kind of great things about uh, Water Street GCA when we were there, and yeah. then all the other little things that I pulled, the nuggets, and put them all together into something comprehensive. Someone like Ted Seth Jacobs had written books, uh, which were good, but yeah. I think there's something about the way that Monticelli was doing the books. They had, Victoria had worked with, I think, Julia and Aristides a couple times, and when I looked at her books, I was like, you know, that's that's on my list of the best books. Yeah, I've they're heard. beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah, and I think that the word and the image and the illustration all go together and that's where you know you reached out to me I think was uh, you knew that I could do illustrations and you yeah. said hey can you help me out with this? My book would not have been done without you Todd. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just I'd still it be clear. writing it. Yeah well I think I think illustrations really help because they make something simple and then you yeah. can kind of look at it and go like I think I got it oh this is it so like you were 
like you're doing your demos, you're kind of talking about you know, brush strokes following a form or something like that. And you can yeah. just show an arrow of how that is yeah, on a exactly. slide painting. So. Exactly. The other thing about writing the book, which was really helpful, was even when I was at uh, GCA study with, you know, there was Jake, Ted was there, Cami was there. Yeah. All these, and Ted Minoff, and, you know, they all come in different hours and they're teaching you different things. But, mm -hmm. like, to collect it all together and put it into a system, that's up to the student. Yeah. You know, so, oh, we're talking about form, we're talking about light, and, you know, and they're all coming at different angles. And part of my digestion after having graduated was to, like, I need to make this into an ordered system. Yeah. Everything everyone said, because yeah. we did HRF also out there in the woods, and, like, everything that was said there is slightly different than... Yeah. So how do you order it? And doing the book makes you order it. Oh, absolutely, and I think that's probably the number one thing that you get from your students, right? It's like, in what order am I doing this? Yeah. And did I go too uh, fast or, you know, what's the next step is always the questions I get. So, for as a teacher, I was always like, it's not so ordered. I think of it almost like a toolbox, like, this is going to get you here. And there are a bunch of ways to think about it that can slow you down, and mm -hmm. I know you're methodical too, so... And then putting it together in a book forces you to put it into an order. Yeah. Forces you to slow it down and yeah. put it in an order. And you know, when I first met uh, when I first met Jake, I said, "This is what's missing for me in painting. My instruction. This is what I need." I said, "It's very much like chess. You know, if you study chess, there's an opening, there's a middle game, and there's an end game. It's yeah. broken into three sections, and you know what you're doing here, and you're doing here, and what you're doing here." I said, "No one's ever taught painting like that. Yeah. But there's an opening. Your block in." Yep. There's a middle where you put your your uh, your terminator, your lights and darks, yep. and then there's the end game. Really, it's in a way an end game where you're turning the form. Definitely, we should talk about that at the different stages. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think you're right. Uh, one of the things that really um, helped me, and I, and uh, kind of witnessing your teaching too, it's always nice to hear somebody almost like with the same echoes. So we have echoes of the all the uh, giants that have come before us. I think Jacob was a big influence on both of us, too. For me, Max Ginsburg is another one. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the way in which you're talking about large masses and uh, basically just taking each step and breaking it down so you're... I mean, one of the one of the problems, I think, and um, I'm sure you had this, too, because we were both in college around the same time, is that a lot of artists work in a very a la prima or go-for-it stage, mm -hmm. and they make a mess quickly, and then they're trying to fix the mess. <laughs> Where for us, we're trying, trying to uh, master each little step yeah, and then move on to the next one. Not that you don't think about that last one, but you can move forward and, and feel pretty good. If you get each stage accurate, and we should have a talk. This is something we really need to go into, I think, Todd. We need to talk about how working within a constructed form or a mm -hmm. process like we're discussing now is actually an enhancer of creativity. Because right. the... the popular conception out there is that, oh, if I learn a method and I follow these stages, it's going to crush my creativity, but it does not. It does not crush the creativity. If you listen to, it, let's do an analogy, you listen to Rachmaninoff on the piano, there's mm -hmm. the keys, they're all in tune, the, the piano's tune, it's all it's laid out, it's very structured, he's in the key of X, Y, Z, and, there's, and it's all written, that's yeah. so structured, but the playing of it is like... So it's the same thing with painting. You have your structure, you have your value strings, mm -hmm. but the application of it, it's like so creative. Right, and I think that some of, um, I don't want to name anyone, but I think uh, we know what we're talking about. There's uh, there's definitely some, <laughs> oh, yeah, that. right, there's, there's, not, there's not a person that we're talking about, but I think there's just a kind of curriculum that are set more in like uh, certain places. Again, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but of just... Um, Almost like throwing all that stuff out and then just be like, learning how to paint is just painting a lot. And it's like, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's yeah, not. it's really, I think for us, we went back to the French Academy and the Hudson River is uh, someone, uh, Hudson River landscape painter is someone you look at a lot. And it's like going back and studying all that. The French Academy seemed to be like building off of all the Italian masters before them and the Dutch and then moving forward with it and then all of a sudden the and it's almost like the 21st century came and they were like, just cut it all off and, and throw it, get throw rid of it all. I went, I mean, I went to Cooper Union. So, which is like... I was trying not to... Uber modern, I'll say Cooper Union. I went to Cooper Union yeah. and it was difficult and, right. and because there was no rules. There was nothing, you just kind of do what you did. And I basically just made mistakes on top of mistakes. 
Right. You know, and I think that's what I'm trying to say is like yeah. that in the um, the systems, the college systems. Uh, it gets a little bit